and welcome back to Talent League Season 9. We've got a couple of bangers for you tonight. I'm going to be on for three games tonight, and I'm joined for the first game, for this one at least. It's Bugs, first time casting. How are you feeling? Are you excited? Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, never watched Talent League before, so from a neutral perspective, looking forward to see what the players have got in store for us tonight. Good. Um, pretty much the same. I'm just new, just from console, so I've mentioned a couple of times of broadcast, so I don't know the teams as much. However, we all know tonight's team quite quite well. Well, a couple of people. Maybe one of them. Just yeah. a little bit, at least one member. Tonight, we're going to be going to Border, at least. It's Old and Gold versus IAS. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that on broadcast at all. It's not going to work. But like I <laughs> say, Border, Old and Gold had the option between Oregon and Border, and they've chosen to take us to Oregon. They'll be starting on the defense, and we have the attack IAS as well. And like I say, we do have a special guest tonight, if you want to introduce them. Bikini body, of all people, yes. has decided to join us in the yes. server. Yep. So... They haven't quite got off to a good start. Two games they've already played. They played one on broadcast, which they lost 7-4, and then they played the other one off broadcast, which they lost 7-5. So it's not been the greatest start to them. So I'm hoping that they can get themselves up and running before the league starts to run away. Of course, there is only seven weeks. So we're hoping we can get a result from them tonight and then at least get things cooking and going. But I think that we're almost ready to go. Um, I think we're just waiting to get things into the lobby, and then we'll get started with this map. So let me have a look. So, in terms of the actual teams that we've got later on, I'm just going to go through and tell you what's the schedule for tonight. Um, there was a game just done before this as well. That was um, Ferrer de Malaga versus Chilwagon. Of course, we've got IES versus Old and Gold. Nerf Miner versus um, Vitalized Sp Esports. And then we've got Goldinis versus Katana Gaming is the final game as well. I'll be on for the three games. We'll be changing a couple of things around. But like I say, this is Bugs' first time. And we're going to get some exciting gameplay, I'm hoping. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no. Yep, so things are starting. We're going to board up. We're starting off. We'll go through the bands and we'll have a look and see which operators aren't going to get their opportunity in the sun on this map. So if you want to take us through the bands, Bugs, so let me know what you're thinking as they come through and we'll have a look. Yeah, probably going to be a thermite ban if I'd say so. No, no. no. I thought they'd go for the hard breaches. Normally the hard breaches first that goes. IAS probably going to go a bit standard here in terms of. Maybe another jackal. They might not actually go for a hard breach ban. Some I've seen some border games that go a bit rogue and don't ban hard breach whatsoever. Certainly find it. Ah, there we go. There's another one also. So as I say, they're just going to leave the breaches up. Probably going to see a lot of walls, a lot of destruction, taking us through the map. Probably not a lot of wall denial either. I'd be yeah. surprised if they ban banned or arcade or mute. Very surprised. We'll have a look there now. Clash. That's not surprising to see to see that go, Clash. to be honest. Make sure, there's no, is, make sure there's no cheaters in the lobby. That is, Clash is gone. Yeah, that's specifically aimed at Bikini, I would imagine. Bikini loves to play on that Clash. Everybody knows it. And that's just, I think that's the third time, probably, all three games that they've been banned. I think it's just a standard ban just to annoy Bikini, really. Sure. Last ban is Solus as well. So I don't think anyone's surprised it's Solus ban. Yeah, very unique this, bans. The Solus one... It's been such a common ban across all the leagues. I've seen it being banned away a lot because I think everyone has kind of came to the conclusion that Solus is in a strong position at the minute. They're obviously denying those drones. The pre-places are an absolute nightmare because you just lose them. They just hunt the drones pretty much the whole prep phase and just get rid of as much intel as possible and that's likely why they're banned. Knock <laughs> as well, just for the fragging power. Hides from those cams and just because our guns are in such a good position that that's why they've been removed and of course the nades and... Such a high ban rate. The Osa one is in the Clash, one of the only ones that I can I'd say are outliers. Mm -hmm. Clash one, of course, is in the bikini, and the Osa one is just basically just Osa's quite strong. I think I think she's a pretty yeah. good operator. I don't know what you think. I think I think she's pretty strong at the minute. Yeah, um, I mean she's a very big pain in the backside to play against, um, unless you've got a couple of impacts in your pocket. Um, but going into this first round, you'll see obviously Bandit is picked. Um, whether or not he'll just place them and go elsewhere because he does have quite a lot of destruction in terms of the sledge, the buck and of course the ace and then the Flores will probably be in there to annoy him as well so it'll be interesting to see how me how long uh, before a wall gets breached but it looks like in the prep phase they're destroying quite a lot of the soft walls for themselves <laughs> Yeah I would imagine they're doing most of that because they've got that mirror on side that I think they'll likely play with a half open situation on that main wall. It's becoming more mm -hmm. common. Obviously, you mentioned that people usually ban the hard breach, yeah. but I think borders kind of adapted a little bit and changed over time where that wall used to always be closed and used to always be a, a bandit on it, a cade on it, or something just denying it. But now mm -hmm. it's kind of transgressed and it's something different where it's 
usually some sort of half open situation usually and that's what we're seeing we have the mirror on it we have bikini on that mirror at the minute and the pressure starting off on the south side moving through towards clean out that cc side there's two players in there just holding on to now you have the jaeger and you've also got the azami so they'll be popping up those kiva barriers just to make sure that no one can get a clear line of sight and that's pretty much what's happening just moving in for the, the north side at the minute and the west side even and getting themselves in a good situation yeah, I like this hold that they're doing in CC. It's one that I like. Or first, when it first actually was started, um, something that they came in. Oh, two kills straight away from IES. That's the CC gone, just as I was about to talk about it. Talk about Caster's Curse. You give them yep. a bit of praise and they're dead. <laughs> yeah, man, it was looking gone. like a good hold for a minute, and then immediately <laughs> they just pop right in there. They had the intel where the players were and just taking them straight off the board. So, not an ideal start from Old and Gold. They're up against the wall a little bit because it's 5 versus C situation now. And Looks like the Crumble. office player's going to be a bit. Here. Just thinking about popping out into the hallway to get that pick. He knows there's one at the top of East, just on the other side. We see another player fall on that attack, and now we're in a four versus three situation. However, we've also got a down coming through as well. Fantasy is down, but not out just yet. Four versus two now, though, as Sakari is able to find the Kragol inside office. And there's only two members left alive for the side of Old and Gold, but there's two members on the ground and the double kill does come through for a meal and now things are looking a little bit tastier for Old and Gold because the HB isn't too great for IAS and they've been able to recover that player at least and the line's now back up and that will at least send out the drones and make sure that these players have to stand still at least for the time being and the meal still holding on to that mirror but at least for this moment at the last minute in the round and things will start to get a bit spicier as it heats up and we have to see the pressure coming through the c4 goes out over that top of that reinforcement but doesn't find its mark on anybody remember of course the hp is not looking great for the attackers of ies at the, the minute they are only one or two bullets away from death but emil is eventually dealt with wedged out of that area inside of archives and now we have a one versus three situation for bikini but he is found with the shot through from office and that is the first round going towards ias yeah that was a really good sort of retake on the, the office from IES on that, because they did lose a couple of bodies initially from Emil, but I was all I was all rooting for a bikini body clutch there, given the, the health that you mentioned, so... Yeah, I it was possible. But was the bikini clutch is still on, we still have, what, six more rounds minimum? Yeah, it was, it was close. It was a decent kind of late round there, but it just didn't quite work out in terms of the... The, the actual getting it to line up with them, they just would then get, get themselves in a good position to actually get profit of the fact that they had two players down, and just unfortunate for them, just collapsed, lost the, air, the start of the round, and then it just kind of fell from there. Yeah, looks like OG are just going with this old and gold, sorry, are going with this standard lineup. They've only changed the bandit, bringing all the same operators from the previous. Yeah, not um, much here, just exactly the same stuff. A little bit of he dropped off his army early on. Presumably for yeah. right. Interesting yeah. though that the Flores is getting dropped for the Brava this time. And also the Twitch is coming into play to probably deal with those mirrors. I've seen a few Brava plays actually. I've seen a couple of them and they've been pretty yeah. well done. The way that the Brava's worked out. I think that Brava's in a, I'd say a balanced to weak position. I think the drone takes a little bit too long mm. and it's... But then again, the thing is, obviously, they've changed Twitch. They've made Twitch harder to play, so it's almost forced people, if they want to have that option, to use a drone, then they'll bring the Brava. This time, we're actually seeing the double up. You've seen the Twitch and the Brava, so they want to make sure that they can get rid of whatever utility that is on those kind of walls and windows and ADSs and cap cans, meat jammers, whatever there is floating around. Gecko, though, is going to get oh. downed, and it's not quite out of the situation just yet. That's inside of CC and not being dealt with as we speak, though, and... Hopefully be able to crawl to safety and get themselves revived there. A shot is spotted though into office from this window from Sakaro onto Kraugle, or sorry, a meal that's playing the side of office and isn't able to land anything meaningful other than a couple of stray shots. And now we kind of uh, hit a little bit of a lull while they try to wedge these players out of that. I have no room. idea how Gecko survived that nade. Yeah, it's a bit of a nade on the hatch and he's just got no damage whatsoever. Perfect right on his feet. It was, he was just off that desk at the time, but at least I've spent a little bit more time in CC. Um, just as he got downed, I was just about to say I was hoping that they would stay more, so I'm glad I kept my mouth closed, because it looks like they're doing well this round. Yeah, exactly. Eventually, though, we do see the first opening pick coming onto the board, and it is Kralgo to find Sakaru, and that is the attackers that losing that offensive option, but... It's just flip a little bit more into the favour of the attackers as we see some a couple of the defenders drop off there. Kraugel and Schwartz are dealt with and 
Now, still uh, wedged into CCTV, still have that player of Gecko who's firmly dealt with, of course, just as we go over that. And four versus two now, and things are not looking too great for the defenders who are still on the same site as before, same setup, exactly the same scenario. Although they have been able to at least slow them down a little bit, it wasn't as quick as last time. Just over peaks a little bit there, bikini body, and is dealt with because of Re was on the reverse angle, finds the shot on that Brava. And now we're in a four versus one scenario, and it's left to Emil to clutch it up, though it is spotted through the rotate and towards Fountain and dealt with and now that's two rounds in the lead for IAS. Yeah, pretty similar round yet again. Um I think with the defenders opening up those holes, the soft walls, um as I previously mentioned, given that the attackers do have little to no wall denial to deal with, it's it's probably working in their favour, which is why you see the two 0 scoreline. Um because they've got a lot of a lot of holes to watch and then with the holes being remade or made even bigger it makes things a little bit harder to move around that site. Yeah, they've. I mean, they've tried this extension twice. They're, mm -hmm. It's not quite worked. That time was a bit better. Yeah, so it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a little bit improvement. The thing is, they just lost some bodies in different parts of the map. That just meant that it made it difficult. They lost one player. They tried sort to nade them from below as well. And like you know, like you mentioned, <clears> you were surprised that Gecko was able to survive that nade. And I think that's yeah. probably one of those ones where the old nades would have got the kill. The new nades where you have to be pretty much buying on their heels with it is what's probably what saved his life there. And even though he was low on HP, he still survived it. It was, it was a really bizarre yeah. one. I managed to get deep into the round with it, but two old leads for IES, and we go to a different site. They're going to have to change things up and change the operators alongside that. We're going to go down to the bathroom and tellers area, getting that hatch is reinforced in. We'd like to see some sort of extension or at least some roam game, because of course you see the Oryx on the board as well. That gives them a little bit of option to move around the map, and we'll see how that plays out for Gecko. Um, before these attackers get started on this attack. Yep, everything seems a bit standard. It does look like they're going to play up top with that hatch being open um, rather than shutting it off. So hopefully be able to hold off the attackers on this site a little bit longer than the previous two rounds um, and then hopefully get a good gunfight upstairs before all hell lets loose. Yep, 30 seconds into the round, and they're just getting the drones in, trying to get the information, find where these defenders are holding on to these positions. Of course, you've got that one player upstairs just inside that taco area oh, and that's... office. One player going for a rotate oh. up that staircase, though, is oh. spotted out. The drone must have been there. The information was fed back to Fantasy, who just held on for a second there, waiting for Emil to come up for the swing and wins that one out. But a down also comes yeah, onto the gecko one. inside of office. And trying to crawl back to site there, are they going to be able to escape the clutches of the lion who's just hot on their heels? The winner just about to drop the hatch, but I think they might be spotted before it happens, but they're able to escape. And Bikini will be able to at least maybe get this revived, but on the hatch though, going to get a double kill, not paying attention to the fact that Fantasy is lurking above the inside of Office. And now Schwartzy in a one versus five situation inside of Workshop has all the work to do. He has everything inside of Workshop just falling apart strict and round them and eventually a flawless round is the result for IAS who take another round on board. Yeah. We'll try not mentioning time and we'll try not mentioning early round holds yeah. any longer. Three rounds, three ca caster courses, so well going forward we're not allowed to talk about the clock. <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave it up to up to yeah. the guys. Up to the, the guys because it seems that we are the sick the sixth man in this team right now for the attackers. It's just unfortunate there and I think at that in that point, it's it's tempting to go for the revive below the hatch, and they did have the coverage. The beginning was on the coverage there. They'd have two players in, in bathroom to at least try and pick that player up. But yeah, I think that was where it was like you're relying on you're relying on the gunfight. You're relying on someone to be able to hold a, a reverse angle up through the hatch. And fighting vertical is never the funnest thing in the world to do. And they just never came out on top. Fantasy is able to get himself an, an easy three k just because of that um, situation and just pops down the hatch and. Got himself that, and that was pretty much what much undone undo, done the entire round for OG, and now they're going back to Armory. Changed yeah. things up though, different style. They're not going for the Mira Strat. They've changed pretty much all their operators. The only operator that's actually managed to make it through Jager. from the last two lineups is the Jaeger. Yeah. yeah. Um, Vigil though, obviously for that Rome game, Bikini and Doc as well. Bikini bringing the Rook and Schwartz on the Doc, so both the French operators are going to make it into this round alongside the mozzie as well just to be like any drones so they've changed things up still no wall denial on that ama that main armor area so they're not opting to go for that of course thatcher is up so whether it is whether it's something that you would actually want to go for you'd have to probably bring the bandit and go for the trick in they're not wanting to go for it anyway so going for a couple of different options on this defense and we'll see if that plays out well for them yeah if it was 
Oh, straight away, Emil getting the two kills. That'll be huge, given that the round difference goes against them. Yep, there you go again. Krog getting a third kill. 5v2. Let's see if IAS can pull this one out of the bag. Yep, it seems that the double hold in CCTV hasn't worked, but pop a one player in there does work. Emil just pops in there, gets himself a wee cheeky double, and then another player falls, and the attackers are staring down the barrel of defeat in this round, and it looks as though we might get the first round on the board for OG, who are just going to play it safe. Just hold on now. They're just going to wait for these attackers to try to come through the map there. Another engagement is found. Krogel is dealt with at the top of the oh. balcony, and now Fantasy is able to find Bikini Body at the same time, just a little bit of an overpeak as well inside of office, and Things are, we came a little bit undone here for OG, who have at least, I think, maybe got a little bit itchy and moved a little bit too quick into trying to deal with these the last two players. And they're just going to hold out and play a little, a little bit more time and wait for these attackers to come to them. And hopefully they can win this one out. Yeah. Attackers do have plenty of time to rejig their attack, I think. Speak to each other. Just hope that things don't get a little bit too cramped in here. They do know where they're coming from. Um, you should be able to relay that information with the Jaeger inside the archives, which is just about to hit the barb. He is going to get droned, but I don't know if there is. Oh, no, there is. There is a cross angle being held from the mozzie. Yep, just waiting for the player to come in from Fountain, and the swing does come through, and the Jaeger is spotted in the corner, so they do have the information of where that player is. Just takes oh. the gunfight, though, wins it out, Gecko's dealt with inside of Archives, and now they have the full of Archives to get in and get a plant down if they do want to get that, but still, they have to deal with these players inside of Armoury, though. The smoke is popped, and there's at least some coverage, though. A triple kill comes out for Ree, who finds Schwartzy just deep in Armoury, and now it's one player left. It's Emil, who'll be looking for the 3k on the round. Goes below, still has the C4 in the pocket, though. He's going to try and C4 the plant, though. Is he going to get it in time? No! Doesn't quite land it doesn't even get the kill it's not on do any damage at all plant just on the other side of the bomb chassis unfortunate for emil who's gonna have to come up and try and bring this back from the clutches of these attackers and just pushes in through the metal staircase and now not going to go for the beepers and give away his position but knows one will be on that bomb chassis knows the other one's going to be directly to his right inside of fountain but can't find the gunfight oh. does find it through the wall fantasy's dealt with emil though in a one versus one but can't ah. find the shot re with a 4k wins the round out for the attackers and ies take that back from underneath Old and Gold, and they go four rounds into the lead. Yeah, that was a much better round from Old and Gold, but like you say, IAS are on high momentum with those first three rounds. Probably just had the advantage with the non having to, not having over a peak, um, and it goes to show having that standing might not well be the tactic that this week OG and are looking for the first win of the the league. That's unfortunate the way that planned out there, and it's. Yeah, one of those ones where you get the man advantage and like you've seen the vigil just got a little bit antsy inside the. Yeah. I think he impacted wanted... the triple wall. To go for the kill as well. Yeah, which exactly. then gave them the opportunity to get into office without having just to channel through that door because it was uh, Ace and Lion, and I, I doubt he would have used these cell my charges for the the soft wall, but it just gave them that extra extra way in, and they just pushed through one doorway and they just peeked their way through. Now, of course, they made just a couple of small mistakes on that defence that did eventually cost them it. It was quite close mm -hmm. when obviously it came down to that 1v1, so it was a close situation, yeah. so they're going to opt to go back. Same lineup, not going to change anything. They're going to try and just basically do what they did the last time, but try and amend those small errors and see if they can get the win out of this one. Hopefully they're able to get it, hopefully they're able to make those amendments and we can start to get a game on our hands, because IES are starting to run away with it a little bit. Yeah, these next two rounds are big for Old and Gold. 4-2 um, half on board, there isn't the end of the world. Um, five one will be harder to come back, and six now you you may as well kiss the game goodbye. So let's hope they can get around on the board and try and get their own momentum going. Yep, I'm hoping that we can get some momentum, like you say, and it looks as though we're getting some early pressure just coming into CC. The same as what we've seen every single round, this seems to be the angle of approach for IAS. They always want to come from that CC side, and they always want to try and clear it out, moving in from the south side, getting the drones in, making sure that they can pressure these players out and try and get the pinch through. They've spotted that one player on the balcony, so they don't have that information of where Gecko is playing. The rotate is spotted as well, and the one player inside of office is known, and now they can move in towards CC, because there's only one player in towards CC, and they've rotated out. Kruggles moved off of that area and now it's Gecko just remaining on that balcony who has decided just to move out towards the east side and drop himself down a little bit. Yeah, it's that long angle that I believe it's Bikini in office that's holding through that rotate hole you can see on the break room door which is forcing the attackers around to the CC side. Um, there is no presence in there this time. So you can see that Vigil's playing below. Uh, that's one thing I would say just as a bit of critique for 
world and gold um, with the CC presence they had with Krog getting on the kill now. Below, where was where was that kill? I know he was in vertical. customs. Was it through vertical? Through vertical, yeah. Yeah, I didn't see that. Um, oh yeah, it must have been the CC window. Um, yeah, that was one of the things I was about to say. So, Old and Gold, with the CC presence, when they dropped off and they knew that IAS were going to take it, they didn't have anything to deny them below, maybe a C4 or something. So, it's good to see Krog realise that and go below and get the kill. Schwartz, though, finds himself one inside of Armoury. Sakura pushes in and he's able to deal with the Ace, who's just got a little bit aggressive there. Another one to follow up, though. Rio, though, is able to get the kill on it. Schwartz saying it's a three versus four scenario, though. Still in favour of the defenders, who, though, have conceded the entire control of Armoury. And the plant can go down. Rio is on that just now, but they've rotated in towards Easy, but they've turned their back to the player in oh. there. Fantasy's lying in wait. He gets himself one. And mm. now Bikini's in a one versus three situation because Gecko's on the floor. And that's it. Pretty much all over and out. Joker comes from nowhere inside in 90 and finds the last couple of kills for IES and that is all she wrote on that round and Golden Gold just fluffed that a little bit yeah that's two rounds they've got the opening kill um, and then it seems like it almost seems like they just lose the head a little bit it's communication particularly with those two guys regain CC control and then turn their back on the guy that walks in break door and gives them two free kills um, the only thing the thing I will say is they they seem to concentrate on one area of the map, one room in particular, and then from there on in, if they lose that, if they lose that sort of hold in that given room, you can see the gaps start to open up where the guys try to come back to site. They're really spread apart. That you saw coming back from the office in that round. Yeah, it seems it's like really, really team. unfortunate. Like it's <clears> disappointing <throat> there because they've done the hard work. They, they had the opening to on a couple of picks. They had the man advantage. They had a good position in terms of the, the control they had on the office side. Mm -hmm. It's just the armory, though. They let them cross all the way in, and there was no one there to play off the refrag to try and help out. I think it was Schwartz that was playing in there, and they mm -hmm. weren't able to actually help them out and <clears throat> double up together and take those gunfights because they, they knew the push was coming, the call should have been made, and they just obviously, as soon as they know the diffuser's gone down, they don't want to cross and try and get the kill that way. They know that they're going to have to take it from CC because to cross that main breach, it's a death sentence. So. They have yeah. to come from CC, but they've just obviously got that tunnel vision and just seen, you know, I just need to get any CC right now and stop the plant. That's what they've seen and they've not even thought, mm, you know what, maybe there's going to be someone behind me inside the break room just waiting for me to do that. And that's exactly what happened. And the round just came undone there, unfortunate for them. And we're going to see a change this time, going to a different site again. And hopefully they've got something in mind this time. We're going to go drop down to the bottom floor. It's workshop this time. And we'll see if they've got something different in stores. A couple of different operators on the side. It's the first time we've seen the warden as well. So I'm happy to see that warden's getting a pick as well. And the shotgun play upstairs from Bikini Body and the mute will come in crucial here for holding on to Armoury. Yeah, this is my favourite site. I was going to mention it in a previous round why I hadn't seen them go here. Um, I think this is probably one of the better sites to, to hold, especially if you are a team with a player that you don't normally play with, or a new team indeed, it's, it's very easy to get this into your map pool um, and continue this on from building strats. Um, you can use the vertical like you can see they are doing just now, um, it is pretty standard. There is only one player up there just now at the moment and he's gone already, it is Bikini. Yeah, they're just trying to hold on and get a bit aggressive there, but not quite aware of the fact that that ace charge was a little bit higher. I think he was expecting to have a little bit more time, or at least maybe get someone to push him while that went off. Didn't quite happen, though. He's dealt with the side of armory. That's the control gone. Gecko, though, finds one on the Joker, and that will at least make it a little bit easier for them to get into a winnable situation. Still in favour of the attackers, those IES get themselves comfortable to try and do some of the vertical work. They don't have a buck or they have not brought in a sledge either, but they do have some breaching charges that they're able to at least use. Oh. And we'll see if they're able to get them. Nice one, eh? Gecko, though, finds himself a double kill on the round, finds Re, and that's one of the heavy hitters gone off the board for IES, and now things are evened up a little bit, but Gecko's only down to about a 1 HP, so we'll not be able to take too many gunfights after that. No, you can really see that vertical play really start to disturb the defenders inside that site. Oh, there's going to be a... Oh, I don't know how he escaped that. Gets the C4 kill from the guy behind him, though. That's the first C4 kill on the vertical play we've seen all game, which is the only critique that I did have, so it's good to see that coming in. Emil's holding his sight down, though. He's came off sight. He's going to give the sight up, likely to be because of the vertical holes, but they've dropped in. I don't know if they have any information. The plant is going down. 
Yeah, the drop goes in, and of course they came through that hatch, and they're going for the defuse here, but to the top floor, Emil goes to try and use some of this vertical play against them, and won't want to pop through that beeper's area, just because it will give away the position, though, but I don't think they're aware of the fact that they're upstairs, doesn't quite spot the player through oh, the it's so close. Realizes a player does get the down eventually, so that's sickly gone, and now the call come that the player is upstairs, so the ace, or sorry, the lion will have to move around, and Fantasy's going to have to dance around the diffuser and get himself in a better position to try and counteract this vertical play, but Emil's running short, a Time. only has 18 seconds left on the clock has to get into the site has to deal with the player before the plant knows they're inside of vents now has to take the 1v1 12 seconds on the clock only four seconds left before they have to go for the defuse now the defuse is gone the round is won but fantasy wins the gunfight anyway and that is another round on the board for ias who look to try and take this map in a clean sweep they're 6 on their attack yeah taking down re was one of the like you said the big hitters in the team but fantasy is having a fantastic game I'd love to see his cost after this. He's getting the plants down, getting 10 and 1 currently, so he's got a 10 KD. Um, he's the one carrying the team. But, yeah. Wonder. I mean, there's a lot of team play coming from IAS. I think that he, the team sort of lineup shows night and day from, from what we're seeing on Old and Gold. There has been some moments where you feel like they ha they have been getting their own in the game, but let's see if they can... Let's see, it might be an attack inside the border. We might be reading into this totally wrong. Yeah. Maybe we can become the sixth man for old and gold this time. That's, that's what I'm it's always hopeful for. That. I'm, I always want to get uh, an even sided game. I always want to see us either get to overtime or see those seven fives or seven fours or just to at least get a wee bit of excitement on that. But it's just unfortunate that old and gold came up against IS. IS are a seasoned roster. At the minute, they are, I believe they're at the top. If I get my statistics right, they're second just now. Second they're both, they won both yeah. of their games. So they're in a good position at the minute. They're one of the better rosters in the league. And Old Gold are a new roster. They've only just recently formed. So mm. it can't be too harsh on them, of course. And no. This is only their, this is only their third game. So I'm hoping that, obviously, going into the season, they can get themselves up and running and start to really get into a good form. Yeah, yeah there has been positive moments. Um, obviously, give them something to look away from from this game. Um, I think, given the f if they're going to suffer with such vertical play, Having the C4 like Emil did in the last round had to come into root play a little bit earlier in the other rounds, but other than that, it's it's mostly just been they're losing the gunfights, and um, whether that comes down to communication or IAS just have simply better better aim labs training. Um, you, you don't know. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. It's one <laughs> you of don't those know who, who trained harder. Yeah, the thing is, the best of ones is it does generally come down to gunplay a lot yeah. more than it would because a lot of people don't. You don't really go to the more strategic heavy, kind of heavy maps, really, just because you don't want to show too much early in the season. You want to try and just... If you can get as much down to just raw gun skill as possible, that's what you want to get. Oh. That's a better situation. Though. The run-out does come out there, but doesn't quite spot the players on the balcony. They're so lucky not to be dealt with. They are just teased it. It went out a little bit, but doesn't quite land any shots. Doesn't realise there's a, a plethora of players out on the balcony. There's so much opportunity mm -hmm. there. For the player inside of CC, if it doesn't, it isn't able to get anything, is able to rotate across and get some in towards Armory. And now the cross angle's been held, and the site is Armory, so that is where they're going to be holding on to. And it's a little bit of a slow start here, a little bit slower than what IES had, and they're still outside the map. All five members haven't been able to get in, and eventually the first entry is found inside of CC. And that's a meal, of course, he's been the hardest hitter for the attackers now for of and gold and in a good situation just on the 98 i'm going to hold through the rotate and make sure that no one can come through from that side and just hold there for a second while the rest of the team get in position for this execute yeah it's almost the same defense setup um that ias are putting on the old and gold the one thing you did see though as soon as the pressure was relieved and they've wasted enough time they immediately dropped back which is something that we didn't see in the previous defenses so They've gained the map control, but have came away still with five bodies on the board, which is for the last minute and a half as Swartz gets the first kill onto the half wall with that wall being soft that you did mention. Yep, gets three the cog. Three versus four scenario, those Bikini is able to find Re, and that's at least one of the hard hitters for the attack the defenders dealt with. And IES now are we feeling a lot of pressure now, but Joker, of course, is there to relieve that. Oh, I sure that was. And looking for the triple, but can't quite get it as Emil is able to put him into the dirt. And now we're in a two versus two scenario. Emil, though, has to get himself through that breach to try and get into armory, but the cross angles are there. Fantasy is lying in wait for that doorway to be 
breached, and that's exactly what he gets the headshot onto Emil. No, it's a one versus oh. one, though, as Gecko pushes in, gets Sakari, and it's just now a fantasy that's left, though. Of course, he's the biggest hitter, though, for IES. Can he land the shots? They're both going back and forward here at the top of the metal staircase and in towards Beepers, but fantasy drops away. He knows he has the time against the attackers here. 20 seconds, though, but he's now had to come back. Yeah, he's playing on the concrete down, floor. Gecko, though, is going to concrete, though. There can't be no attempt, no attempt of the Nitro Cell at all, but has to swing now, goes through, but the diffuser's down, and now it's in the favour of the attackers, though, but can the swing come through from Fantasy, who's still going back and forward, but the attackers finally get around on the board. Old and Gold find that attack on the armory, and they're able to get that clutch scenario in there. The one versus yeah. one is one in a big echo, and finally, we are activated inside this map for Old and Gold. Yeah, like I said, attacker side of border. We'd, we become the sixth man when the sides switch. Uh, that was some good bit of composure from Gecko reading the situation that it was a Valk on the board going below with his C4, enabling the plant on concrete, um, and played well in the 1v1, didn't overpeak, allowed Valk to swing him, so fantasy, given that he does have the plethora of kills that he does, likely had the momentum to believe he could win that gunfight, whipping out the Deagle, but was shut down nicely by Gecko. Yeah, it was really well done, and I've got to commend both teams there, because the comms were clearly there, and it was, a it was a really good example of both of the coordinations and for the 1v1s, because obviously they've called out it's a Valk, and the Valk drops immediately, so they've called out that's a possibility, so get to concrete, get to a safe place to plant, and go for the plant, because you can win the plant out, you can get that down before they get back, because they know on the sound cue. So they must have had a drone waiting on that. The Valk, alternatively though, knew about the plant going down in concrete, and as soon as they knew about that, they just immediately were back to site, didn't even try to go for the C4, not even going to bother with it, I'm just going to go straight back up the staircase, straight back in, because I know exactly where they're going to plant, because there's only two places they can plant. It's either concrete on the archive side, or concrete on the armory side. It's one of the two. And of course, you would have heard of your beepers if they came across a different way, but to get back across armory, it's unlikely. So 50-50, chose right, just lost the 1v1, and it was a nice kind of team play behind the scenes even though it was a 1v1 it was nice to kind of see the way it played out and of course we'll go and get the first round yeah looking forward to this round i guarantee this is going to be a rush plant with the ying the monty the glass bikini is repelling up there i thought he was going to be on the glass i thought he was going to go for some youtube clips but it looks like it's going to be a rush onto the archives which no one's currently in sight which ias really need to look out for because that monty is coming quick and fast onto that door Yep, there's absolutely no info on what this situation is. The door's open, the Incandela comes in, and now they've activated. They know exactly what's happening. The smoke comes in, the planet's gone down. The coverage should be there, though, and that will at least deny anyone crossing into archives. But C4 goes out, but is able to find it. Smart Schwartz, though, is downed. The coverage has at least gone on the window for a little bit, though, but Gecko's able to get the plant down, and now things are ticking. 40 seconds left on the clock, 3 versus 5, and IES are struggling here to get in towards archives. The good position is established from Old and Gold, so Carol at least finds one onto Gecko. Still looking to hop out this window to find anyone though but it pops up the staircase bikini loses the 1v1 versus re because re is just better that way and so three versus three scenario but there's 22 seconds left on the clock they have to get to this diffuser one on the window is still there but schwartz with the coverage has the bearing nine out and is able to deal with that player now and it's a one versus three situation and it's all but gone for this round because re just doesn't have the time to get to that diffuser and get the kill on the coverage now but it's able to get it gets oh. a triple on the round re what's happening here can't get the last one though it's just unfortunately gonna run out of time and just go for the kill to pad the stats out a little Bit, but the round will go towards Old and Gold. Yeah, that was a much better round from Old and Gold. Reading into the the archives, plant was obviously on for the previous round. Took a gamble on that Monty strat that we see time and time again in every game of ranked, um, and it paid off. Um, one thing I will say is Glass now having that bear in nine paid dividends on that archives window because if that was the PMM, I don't think he's winning that fight. Yeah, it done the job. Yeah. If Glass was lucky to be alive as well, because Glass was in a down situation at one point, and he was. able to get them up. And it was just a wonderful plan. It was a wonderful way it done. It was a, it was a picture perfect execute in terms of, of, re, of course, Re was, of course, there to at least make it a, a little bit of a pain and make them work a little bit, make them sweat that they've maybe messed up because Re was just completely active. He was on, a, on an absolute storm or just didn't have the time, though, to get in from office and get to the diffuser before time ran out. And they do win it on time. And, you know, I still think that IES will edge it here. I don't think they'll be caught out by rushes this time. And they'll have to go to a different site, though. They're going to go change things up. They're not going to opt to go back to Armory this time. They're going to just go downstairs, through Mantellos, change it up a little bit, take a couple of different operators and see if they can push this across the line. Yeah, it must be really good to be on the, the support side of IES, knowing that you've got the players like Fantasy and Ree that will go and get the triple kill, the quad kills time and time again, get you through these tough rounds and close things out. But... 
It'll be, yeah, they're going to bathroom tells now, totally different. It'll be good to see, because they are opting for uh, they're switching out the money. He was originally going for it. I think they were expecting a rerun of the previous, but it'll be interesting to see how Ying affects this site, because it is quite small and compact, whether or not they're able to have the same effect on this round is all we need to see. Yeah, they've reinforced the hatch though, so the Ying could be beneficial here if yeah. they're able to get to that window and could get the hop in there. But instead, they're just going to go for a different side of push. It looks as though they're going to send it in from this side. And if they potentially just pinged out the wrong site, do they think it's Workshop? Is this why they're stacking up on this door? Surely the um, information is going to be fed back that it's Teller's bathroom and they're going to have to rotate. Yeah. I think that's what they, they're going to do. But they do send it in. They do eventually go in the doorway. Rido, of course, is just waiting there for a double kill. He's just lying in wait. Knows there's a couple of players coming in from that window. He's able to collect himself a double kill. Gecko finds Sickly, though, who's not been very impactful on this entire map. He's now dealt with. Four versus three scenario, though. But Ree is on an absolute stormer the last couple of rounds. Pushing in, though, from the double door, though. Gecko's able to find Fantasy, though. That's one of the heavy hitters gone for IAS. And three versus three now. And this is could still go either way. Two minutes left on the clock. And there's a little bit of a lull in action now, of course, the open picks, and the attackers are just going to regather themselves and get themselves into a better position to try and get into this map. Yeah, I think IAS gave Old and Gold the false hope that they could have taken ventilation there to then hopefully push in through Workshop, because you'll see that rotate hole, the balls was soft. I think with that, Re gave them a false sense of all sense of hope that they could just jump in, take it straight away, and then almost go for a repeat rush. But as you'll see, things have slowed down. They've regained workshop control. They're now pushing through customs. They do have two less members than what they started with, so it'll be interesting to see if they can take this out as a as numbers advantage to nobody, other than the fact that OG are currently losing some health on both Ash and Bikini himself. Yep, Joker here, though, is going to be a plague at the top of this metal staircase, and exactly that. He's finding Schwartzy inside of Stockroom and is able to deal with him and finds the head through the soft wall, knew the player was there, the yellow pin came out and they had to call that they were in there, but now they know at least one of them's inside of Customs, and the ace charge will give away more of that position. And no, but three versus one, though, as Sakar's able to find Bikini Body, and now it's a, of three versus one with Gecko left with it all to do, has the hopes and dreams of OG on side, but Joker there with the final shot, and IES take the map 7 2. Yeah. Really good game from the team of IAS. A uh, really good debut cast for myself to watch that. Great siege being played from teams that I'm not too comfortable with in terms of knowing knowledge about them. Um, but IAS are certainly one to look out for for pushing towards the end of that season for the playoff spots, indeed. Yeah. Was... Three players over 10 kills. Was... Yeah. It was Impressive. a really good performance for IES. They were really well done. A couple of big moments, and I think their coordination did really shine through in terms of getting the information for these players to act on. The entries were able to get that profit that was there, and it was just a wonderful performance all around. Re was a standout for me, a couple of great rounds. Um, of course, Fantasy, a couple of wonderful kills as well, and that was, that was you know, it was a pretty straightforward game. It was on border. There wasn't much in terms of the actual strats. They both kind of mirrored each other. That's likely what usually what happens in a best of one. You don't see the, you know, a deep strat book, really. You just see the kind of trade for trades kind of scenario. And people being a bit more aggressive than maybe would be in that kind of best of three situation. And good game, though. It was very enjoyable and very happy to be on tonight. Yeah. I think this, it was one of those where, even the guys bringing in all those kills, they were still able. Fantasy in particular got, I believe, maybe two, even three plants down, um, which isn't something you normally see. It's normally just running gun. So they do have a, a good balance across the team of everyone pitching in towards that cost percentage at the end of the game. Yeah, it was a good game. It was really entertaining. Of course, we have a couple more games on tonight. We are going to throw it to a quick break and then we'll be back with you shortly with the next game. So go and get yourself some refreshments. Go and, you know, go to the bathroom break, whatever it is you need to do, and then pop back and see us in about 20-odd minutes. We'll see you shortly and in the next game. Bye-bye.